welcome to episode 46 of the Monday Night Review. I, mean, I could be wrong, it's the first time I've ever gone without checking what episode number it is. Getting slack, it's the Easter chocolate, I blame the Easter chocolate, I also blame Easter for this going out a day late. Uh, it's, it's being the Tuesday Night Review this week, but um, yeah, I got a bit of a shock when it was Monday yesterday and I had no idea what I was doing for this week's episode. But it's one that I've wanted to do actually since I moved here. I think it's the sign of a real true crime person if when you move you instantly check for murders in your area. Now there are a couple that I already knew of, but one that was a serial killer who was disposing of bodies in the area during the 90s when I lived here when I was growing up that... I A, didn't know about at the time, my mother didn't know about at the time, and he kind of goes under the radar. I could be wrong, uh, but he is kind of, I don't know, horribly sinister British murderer who we're going to talk about today. Uh, Today we're going to talk about Alan Grimson. On December the 12th, 1986, 18-year-old Simon Parks from Kingswood near Bristol, who is a radio operator on the HMS Illustrious, joins hundreds of other sailors drinking at the Horseshoe Bar and the Hole in the Wall pub while docked in Gibraltar awaiting their homeward voyage to Britain from a tour in the Far East. Parks has spoken to his mother on his arrival to Gibraltar to ensure that they had these special passes that would allow them to greet him at the docks when they landed in the UK. He's really excited to see his family. He's excited to see his girlfriend and spend Christmas with them. And he's seen by a friend at 10.30 that evening of the 12th. But after that, he just disappears. Two days later, the illustrious sales back to Great Britain without Simon. His passport, clothing and Christmas presents for his loved ones are still on board. His parents aren't told that he's been missing for two days. In fact, they just are told that he's gone AWOL, absent without leave. And it's assumed that he's met a woman and that's why he's gone AWOL. I don't think his parents assume that. They don't assume the worst, but they think it's a bit odd. He's obviously disappeared. They thought that maybe he was ashamed about something. He'd missed the boat, and that's why they hadn't heard from him. Uh, But his body's never found, and no one hears from him ever again, and no one knows what has happened to him. And eventually they are assuming that he has been murdered he hasn't got any of his personal belongings he hasn't got his passport for me the idea of going AWOL is one thing but going AWOL without your passport I mean I guess he's 18 we do silly things when we're 18 11 years later on the 12th of December 1997 18 year old Nicholas Wright a sailor on board the HMS Edinburgh which was at the time docked at Portsmouth, he disappears. He'd been at a nightclub in Portsmouth. He'd left with a fellow sailor who was questioned by military police but wasn't a major part of their investigation. And he's never seen again. And the same thing happens. Nobody hears from him. And so it goes from being a sort of missing person's has he got into something bad or, you know, is he embarrassed about something and to to being an assumed death, be it accidental or murder. Then on the 12th of December, 1998, barman Sean Jenkins disappears after working his shift in the Hogshead pub in South Sea. Jenkins is originally from Newbury. Uh, He'd briefly been in the Navy. I mean, it must have been very brief because he's 20. And then he becomes this barman. And after his shift, he goes to Joanna's, a local nightclub, where he was seen fairly intoxicated. But after that, he's never seen again. So three different men, all links with the Navy, all around a similar date, all disappearing into thin air. And 
their families are vocally demanding the investigations continue. And actually, the police never really stop looking for Nicholas Wright. He is found, you know, he's he was last seen in the Portsmouth area. They keep looking for him. And they realise that he's probably no longer alive, so they are looking for his remains. Now, a tip leads the police to look for the body of Wright on the A272 near Cheriton, north of Winchester, near where I live now, near where I grew up. And what's very sinister is they don't find one body. They find two. Two bodies within four miles of each other. They find one near Cheriton on the A272 and one near West Tisted on the A32. Both bodies are male. They have both been there for some time. They were badly beaten. One had had his throat slit and they have been sort of not even... One of them is is described as being found in a shallow grave. One of them is wrapped in bin liners and deposited in a hedge. Um, both of these men get identified. One is sadly Nicholas Wright. The other one is Sean Jenkins. And it's then realised that both these men have someone in common. And that someone is Alan Grimson. So Alan Grimson is originally from North Shields. He's born in 1958. He has an imposing build. He's six foot two. He's in the Navy. He's a big boy. He has not had a great upbringing. He earns the nickname Frank after Frankenstein while he's in college because he's got this broad forehead. Um, And he joins the Royal Navy in 1978. He serves aboard the HMS Illustrious and is a trainer in firefighting techniques while based in Portsmouth. So he's described as a homosexual. It's difficult to know whether his fellow sailors knew he was gay, it was illegal in the Navy at the time. Uh, but Grimson, when he's interviewed by the police, he doesn't shy away from discussing his sexuality. And as they interview him, it, it all comes out. He admits to murdering both these men. And he says that... Part of this was that he scoured the ranks of the trainees and cadets that uh, passed through his courses and when he was on courses as an instructor. And he wanted to dominate and kill the best looking ones. Grimson met Nicholas Wright on a firefighting course run by the Royal Navy in November 1997. He offered to give Wright a lift home to Leicester on the weekend when they were on leave. But Wright was suspicious of his motives. Wright said to his family that he suspected Grimson was gay and perhaps um, that was why he was offering him lifts. And I think his parents told him, you know, to be be careful, but as you would, it doesn't mean that anything bad's going to happen. It just means that, you know, you've got to make sure you're not in a position where you're leading someone on unfairly, I think, I'm assuming is what they they meant. So whilst Wright is on Shawley from HMS Edinburgh in summer 1997, he is seen out drinking with Grimson. They are witnessed leaving a Portsmouth nightclub together and according to Grimson, they then go back to his flat. They are both quite drunk. Uh, Grimson says he tried to kiss Wright, and Wright rejects these advances, and Grimson attacks Wright. He punches him. It's very difficult because some of these, uh, some of this account comes from interviews with Grimson, who obviously delights in what he's done so it's very difficult to know what is actually the truth but he says that Wright begged 
Grimson not to rape him. Grimson beat him up. And when Wright said, why don't you just kill me? Grimson decided to do exactly that. I, I find it difficult to believe that someone would say in that situation, why don't you just kill me? I think you're more likely to uh, placate, try and calm down the person that you're with. So he says, when, when Wright says, why don't you kill me then? Grimson just gets really angry and loses it and hits him repeatedly with a baseball bat, cuts off part of his right ear and then slits his throat with a carving knife. He later then admits that he performed a sex act on the body and puts Wright's body in the bathtub, has a shower and goes to sleep. The next day, he wraps Wright in bin bags and dumps him in the hedgerow by the A272 near Cheriton. A year later, he meets 20-year-old Jenkins outside Joanna's. Jenkins is very drunk and agrees to go back to Grimston's flat. It seems to me that perhaps Jenkins was was gay or I'm unsure, but he also refuses to have sex with Grimson. Grimson, it seems, basically wants to relive the feeling that he had with Wright. So he is incredibly violent. He forces Jenkins to have sex with him. He punches him and threatens him. And so Jenkins relents and has sex with him. And in the morning, Jenkins begs to leave, but Grimson ties him up, leaves him tied up and bleeding in the bath, goes out, and when he returns, he beats Jenkins to death with a baseball bat. His body is then dumped next to the A32 in West Histed. So it seems there are a few things that make make me question this. The fact that he has a shower and goes to sleep after killing Wright makes me question whether this is a first offence. He seems very relaxed for a first offence. I also think it's interesting that he says that, you know, the the murder of Jenkins, he didn't get the the same better than sex euphoria that he had uh, with with Walker, Wilson, Wright. Um, But he also didn't use a knife. So... I wonder if that's him honing his skills, basically. It's very... They're they're not... They're similar attacks, but a different actual cause of death. So, two murders, almost exactly a year apart, strikingly similar, But no one actually believes these can be the only deaths that Grimson's responsible for. They set up a whole task force, Operation Thornhill. And Grimson seems fine being arrested. He seems happy to talk about his attacks. He uh, celebrates when he's talking about killing Wright. He says it was such a great feeling. When sentencing Grimson at... Winchester Crown Court in 2001, Judge Peter Cresswell told him, you are a serial killer in nature, if not by number. So he's given the maximum possible sentence. But lots of people doubt that Grimson can have only killed these two people. He was a Manchester City season ticket holder and he used to travel to all the games. Apparently he would go with his sandwiches and his thermos flask. But a friend of his says he never, ever attended a game. So some believe that actually what he would do is he would use, use being a ticket holder to go to all the different towns where there were games and get up to nefarious deeds. Now, whether this was because he was working in the Navy where it was illegal to be gay at the time. And this was a way that he could have homosexual encounters kind of anonymously. 
is one thing, but lots of people believe that he was actually killing young homeless men at the time. Possibly they could be men who are uh, homeless and maybe sex workers, um, so nobody's going to miss them, nobody's going to notify the police if they disappear. Grimson, when interviewed, admits that he targets young, attractive men that he was working with and would then kind of pursue them. Some believe he could easily have killed as many as 20 young men. And one of those men is believed to be Simon Parks, who we heard about at the top of the story in Gibraltar. So Parks was seen leaving the Horseshoe Bar in Gibraltar to get something to eat, according to the police. And then someone fitting his description was seen drunk at a nearby naval function inside the Fleet Pavilion at the Hole in the Wall pub. Another crew member later claims to have walked back to Illustrious, past the Trafalgar Cemetery, with Grimson and a young sailor who could have been Simon, but he couldn't positively identify him as Simon. But it was definitely Grimson. And he said when they got back to Illustrious... Grimson and the other man decided to return to town, but and that's as as much as we know, and it, we don't even know if that was Simon. But if it was Simon, then obviously that puts Grimson with the boy who disappeared on the night that he disappeared. Now, Grimson resolutely refused to admit to knowing or having anything to do with the disappearance of Simon Parks. But I believe that that's possibly because he knew that he was going to be released at some point. He was coming to the end of his sentence. And if he wasn't found guilty of any further murders, then he would be set free or he would be eligible for parole. Now, the problem with that is he had said that not only did he enjoy killing, but he would happily do it again. So they were really keen to not let him out. But in uh, 2002, he did apparently confess to killing Parks and burying the body in an unknown location. So Grimson's drawn maps but won't give an exact location. So I think this is weird. I wonder if, as I said, he's he's aware that if he gets caught and sentenced, he won't be eligible for parole for a long time and he's close to maybe getting out. Um, but he is so kind of, as many killers are, pleased with his work with killing the two men that he's admitted to, I find it weird that he doesn't do the same about Parks. So he gives this vague map of where he says the body is buried in Gibraltar and the police go and dig up that area and actually they end up going back three times. Grimson also implies that there are two other bodies buried near where he disposed of Parks. So on the one hand, he's implying that there are three other bodies that he's responsible for, but he will not give an exact location. So allegedly he confessed because the family of Parks had said, you know, we know that you did it and we just want to be able to give our son a proper burial. So that's why he allegedly confessed. What I found very interesting when researching this is there isn't a lot of information out there. There's Murderpedia, there's a very short Wikipedia page. There is a lot of tabloid articles, which are all the same, copy, paste. Um, And there are a few BBC articles from the time of his sentencing. But there isn't a lot more information. So it really is a kind of overlooked murderer. But they've dug up a lot of the Trafalgar Cemetery. They've dug up some of the areas where near where the, the sailors were. 
still no body. They have found one body, but it was proven through the use of DNA to not be that of Simon Parks. And they are still looking for him. Grimston is now in his 60s, so there's a lot of pressure, I think, for the family to find Parks and get closure on this. I would like to think that uh, Grimson will never be released, but unless they have a reason to keep him, there is every possibility that he could be released um, because I th- believe he was given a 22-year sentence, which he has served. So unless they have a reason to hold him, and I really don't think in Britain that you saying that you will kill again although it should be enough to keep you in prison I don't think it is so they're still looking for the body of Simon Parks they're still looking for possible links to him having killed previously as I said earlier it just seems very clean cut for Wright to have been his first victim and for him to be so calm that he could shower sleep afterwards and casually dispose of the body and bearing in mind that the body wasn't found for two years longer than two years just the the way it seems a very calculated cool maneuver um and now obviously we've also got the the date simon parks disappears on the 12th of december is that a coincidence Nicholas Wright dies on the 12th of December. Sean Jenkins dies on the 12th of December. So psychologists are also looking into what it is about the 12th of December, what happened on that date that has caused Grimson to choose that day. But also, are there murders in between? Are there murders that he's committed that we haven't linked to him? And was it just that those two bodies were in a similar area on a similar date? And actually, there are lots of bodies from around the country when he was going to follow his season ticket that, as I said, haven't been linked to him or haven't been discovered, or they were the disposable members of society. They were the young homeless men who needed money and who nobody was going to miss. I mean, I'll give an update if we find the body of Simon Parks, but for now, that is the story of Alan Grimson. I thought it was going to be a a really in-depth... I mean, that's about as in-depth as you can get because there is not a lot on him. I suppose in a good way, there is... Uh, there's a crime watch for those of you who remember crime watch um in the uk there was a crime watch episode on um simon parks there is um there are, there's another tv program about the the finding of the body so in a way it's very good that it is victim focused not uh murderer focused but he I don't know. I don't know if we were lucky enough to catch a serial killer right at the beginning of their spree. That almost seems too good to be true. Yeah, that is the story of Alan Grimson. I'd love to hear from you. So please send in any requests that you have for topics to cover. Um, I've got some good ghost stories brewing. We will be also going back on the tube soon back to the US states I can't remember who is after Alaska Hmm. Um, so yes as always please email themondaynightreview at gmail.com you can find us on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok at the Monday Night Review You can also join our Patreon where you get little extra snippets of stories and it's basically uh, a way to support the podcast so I can keep doing episodes. And you can buy me a coffee if you don't want to join the Patreon. If you just want to buy me a one-off coffee, that is also very appreciated. 
it will no doubt be spent on a book. Uh, I've got my Kindle is loading up with murder books and crime books and ghost books and history books because I realised that my poor kids are just surrounded by loads of paperbacks of terrifying, terrifying cases. But I do have on the website, we have a blog spot, the Monday Night Review blog spot, where you can see some of my recommended reading. You can see some of my recommended TV shows for those who like a true crime documentary. And until next time, be kind, stay safe, and always check the back seat before you drive.